welcome to Sports Center. That's Kelsey Riggs. I'm Shay Cornett. Hey, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with us. For those of you expecting to see the Little League World Series here on ESPN or on ESPN2, both games currently in a rain delay. When they resume, we will get you back out to Williamsport. In the meantime, you're stuck with us. And you're also getting some breaking news within the last hour. The Panthers. For more, our Bucks reporter Jenna Lane joins us now from Tampa. So Tom Brady is back. Jenna, this is all good news. What comes next as he and the Bucks prepare for the start of the season now, which is about two weeks away? Good afternoon, Shay. Yes, Tom Brady. Well, that is offensive line. Another injury suffered this past Saturday. Guard Aaron Stinney is now out for the season with a torn ACL and an MCL. What are Tampa Bay's plans to fill his role? There's so many injuries now to this line. Yes, Shay. Stinney was very much but in the preseason Saturday, as Jenna mentioned, on the road against the Colts. Jenna Lane, thank you. In studio with us. First time I'm seeing Kimberly A. Martin here in person and in the and flesh. I love it. Hello. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's talk more about this Jets quarterback situation. What can you tell us about the plan for Zach Wilson as he heals from that surgery going forward? Actually, right now the Jets are saying there is no Up exact And then if week one they have to go against the Ravens, that can make for an interesting storyline. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that later on. Let's pivot to another team that has quarterback questions, and that's the Browns. Mm -hmm. They now know they'll be without Deshaun Watson, obviously, for the first 11 games of the season. They're planning on having Jacoby Brissett start week one against the Panthers, but what more can you tell us about the level of interest perhaps in someone like Jimmy Garoppolo? It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Jimmy Garoppolo. This is a team that, that looks like they've got to just release Jimmy and Jimmy's fine with being a backup. That's the only situation I see that Jimmy G ends up in Cleveland. Interesting. So maybe we should just stop talking about this narrative altogether. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Kimberly A. Martin, thanks for the insight. We appreciate it. Thank you. NFL analyst Sam Macho back with us here. And so what did you see out of Daniel Jones last night that you liked? Yeah. Positive. Well, I saw a calm, smooth operation. But even more specifically, I loved how Daniel Jones was Turn taking. Daniel Jones. But I'm wondering, I know you just mentioned Brian Dable playing to his strengths. Do you think Brian Dable can have this transformation with Daniel Jones, kind of like he did with Josh Allen in Buffalo? I think he can. I don't know if it's going to be that huge of a transformation. Remember Josh Allen's rookie year, a lot of people were down on him. I think 10 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. And all of a sudden, year after year, he got better and better with be able to do that. And he needs to not turn the ball over because he's tied for third most turnovers in the NFL over the last three seasons behind one Baker Mayfield. Sam Macho, thank you so much. Eagles won that game 21 to 10. Okay, so after seeing all that, we got your offensive takeaway. Let's go biggest takeaway on the defensive side of the ball. You know, your bread and butter. What do yes, you got after yes. two weeks in the preseason? I'm going to go TJ Watt. Steelers should focus on the defensive <laughs> side of the ball because there's a lot going on on the offensive side. Sam Macho, thank you so much. Begins at 7 Eastern, Shay. I love a little Monday Night Countdown on an actual Monday. That's going to do it for us here for on ESPN2. Little League World Series between Japan and Nicaragua coming your way next.